Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. And this is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. And we also have a few, a couple of guests from another podcast, Twisted and Uncorked. Would you like to introduce yourself, ladies? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the only Canadian in this group. I am Alicia in my closet in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I am Sierra in my closet in Alabama. Welcome in, ladies. Welcome to the closet. They have dubbed themselves our podcast little sisters. (laughs) (laughs) we're all we're lovers of wine all things twisted and you guys have been around just a little bit longer than we have with our little reset but you guys have always been such great supporters and and friends of ours so we're super happy to be here yeah well thank you for coming to join us on this monday episode it's not a monday is it nope it's not a monday it's a wednesday on this (laughs) day episode that we're having (laughs) happy happy day Um, We're very happy to have you, and they are going to share a story with us. And today, since we both podcasts, we record with our best friends, we are going to theme this a best friend episode. So it's all things bestie up in here. Christy told a story over on their podcast, Twisted and Uncorked, so you need to jump over there if you want to hear her talk about besties and all the murdery things that they do. Um, Do you guys want to tell us a little bit about your podcast before we get started? Um, Yes. We release new episodes every Tuesday. We cover all twisted topics from conspiracies to serial killers. And don't exactly. you guys normally have fun cocktails to go along with your crimes? We do. Yes, which is we a do really it wine or sangria, typically. Wine on my episodes, we use it for sangria on hers. Nice. But I've been in charge as of late of picking the sangria recipes. So if you guys are new to our channel after listening to this, forgive me. I'm not nearly as good of a bartender as Sierra is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is Sierra the one that does the one like the TikTok yes. videos? Yeah, she, yeah. yeah, she's she's yeah. our uh, show bartender. Yeah, people yeah. are trying I to hire her this. all over. <laughs> nice, um, but yes, you if you like crimes and clauses, I'm sure you'll want to check us out. So come yeah. and miss it. <laughs> yep, head on over there, and I think that one of you has a case for us today. Which one are we? Who are we looking at? That would Yuba. be me. Sierra, okay. I'm going to tell a story. Um, but Alicia, do you want to talk about the wine you're drinking? Oh, I guess I can. Uh, I am drinking my favorite bodacious white, smooth white. I don't know if you guys have bodacious there. Sierra couldn't find it where she is. No. It is a Canadian wine, um, but it's like the easiest wine to drink. I always have a box in my a box. fridge. <laughs> And it's white. It's a white one for those of you who can't see. Yes. So I would recommend if you can find it in your neck of the United States. What about you ladies? What are you all drinking? Pinot Noir. There it is. Yes. (laughs) From Oregon, which is my favorite Pinot's is from Oregon. And I'm going to Oregon and I'm going to visit a winery there. Well, I will have already done that when this drops. So it was fantastic. I'm actually switched over to the sparkling water because it's late. It's lady late late here. <laughs> she did have a glass of red on our show, I did. guys. So uh, yeah. blend. Yeah, that's when she was all uh, happy and just sitting back and listening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what about you, Sierra? I have decided to try and drink some alcohol for once in a while. <laughs> um, it's just a white claw, though. One of the new surf flavors wild berry acai smash it's pretty good i'll let you take it away us all oh, right story uh well our thing one of our things is topics we love themes we love themes so much every single uh round we do rounds of topics every i think it's month and a half or so but each time yeah. we do one called special topics where we choose a topic and both of us have to find a story about that topic so we were extremely excited to find a topic or a theme and share it with you guys the best friend crimes don't get any ideas anybody though yeah i (laughs) it's our story is about a best friend who is a perpetrator so i think we're all better friends than this person (laughs) oh no Um, but i hope so yeah i hope so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Today, we will be telling you about two young women that made friends with the wrong man. 
And today's oh. story is of Heather Wilms and Esmeralda Herrera. Esmeralda. Isn't it a wonderful name? It is. Actually it is. Beautiful. It rolls <laughs> right on out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to start by talking about Heather. She graduated from O'Connor High School in 2001 and went on to attend San Antonio College and Texas Lutheran University. She had five siblings and many friends. She was truly loved by all. One of her friends was Jose Baldomero Flores, known to her and her family as Joe. The two met in high school and continued their friendship long outside of that. He became part of the family, often staying at her house with her family for dinner. On February 21st, 2005, Heather was supposed to go to work as a server at Champs Americana Restaurant, but never showed up. Her friends and family tried calling her, but there was no answer. She was a reliable young woman and would not miss a shift without telling someone first. And so panic set in, and even further when she didn't show up for pizza afterwards with her work friends. This is why Sierra freaks out if I don't answer her or Mm -hmm. I am late for recording. Proof of life. That's (laughs) exactly what Beth texts me all the time. Proof of life, please. Proof of life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's good. We need to adopt that because sometimes. We need to adopt that for sure. I Mm -hmm. I like, I want a picture of you with the newspaper with the name on it. You know, no, I'm not that crazy. (laughs) I just want her to text me back because I'm needy. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I'm like, and. I every time the next day she'll text me back and I'm like and she lives yes yes if you Christy text me proof better than of to wait life, the next I day. promise I will text you back yeah, yeah. usually I will text like, her husband and her son I work from home and my entire job is based on my phone so most of the time I'm like mm-hmm. after work is done I'm like I don't want to look at my oh, phone anymore yeah, yeah. I'm just done so that fair makes, enough yeah, yeah. usually there I, was I don't text one. Back. M- recording mishap with one of our podcast friends that we record with quite regularly and I misunderstood the time assignment and I went to a high yoga class and they were recording and like are you okay and I didn't yes. have my phone in yoga so I, I get off and Sierra's out. like Sierra thought I was dead yeah I was like, <laughs> uh, yeah I think happened? I would too absolutely yeah, we were supposed to be recording yeah mm. where are you i'm sorry i, I actually like, wonder corpse Beth, pose i'm not actually dead everything's fine if i had my red receipts on for you if that would suffice or would you just be like no the perpetrator oh, yeah. has read yes. your message and didn't answer oh no because i know nobody has your passcode <laughs> <laughs> it would you suffice. Go. there you go okay. all right i accept it text your besties that you're okay guys moral yes, of the please. story yeah Tragically, after a short, uh, sorry, after a short search, Heather's body was found inside her bedroom at her Leon Valley apartment by her father. Oh, she had been raped and strangled to death. No, she was only twenty-one years old. Mm. No one knew anyone that would even think about doing something like that to Heather. But police acted quickly, interviewing everyone that she knew. Unfortunately, they got no leads on a possible suspect, and eventually, the department had to focus on other cases, and her case went cold. Flash forward six years. Focus on other cases. She's a twenty-year-old kid. Right. Focused. Six years later, it is now March second, two thousand eleven. San Antonio firefighters responded to an apartment fire, and inside they found the body of a woman who was seemingly tied to her bed. Homicide detectives were on scene immediately as this was a fire started to cover up the grisly crime. Hmm. The woman inside was identified as 30-year-old Esmeralda Herrera. She had been tied up, raped, beaten, and strangled before being left to burn in the fire. Oh my tragically God. Oh. again with cat, the burning guys can't no your warning animal death <laughs> oh no cat, cowboy also died in the fire mm. cowboys what was his name cowboy name cowboy yeah. i didn't know if you said cowboy or hellboy <laughs> either both. way we both. accept both <laughs> cowboy oh, i like cowboy yeah. better oh okay anybody that can hurt a pet 
you're just the worst kind of human now. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. There's I'm no sorry. rehabilitating we, we, after that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Animals are better than people. I'm and sorry I'll to even, say it, yeah, guys. I'll even say even a cat because I'm not a cat person. But I'm I, not a cat no, person I'm either. not either. I, and yeah. that hurt me. Yeah. yeah. Guys, yeah. cowboy the cat. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. R.I.P. And Esmeralda. Heather. Oh, yes, absolutely. She's a Disney princess, I'm convinced. That's a Disney princess name. I mean, it is Esmeralda so. Herrera. Hunchback no, of I know, Gone. but just like, no, but just yeah. she's not, she's not really a princess, is she? Isn't I'm she like sure a gypsy? A Isn't she like a temptress? Gypsies can be princesses. <laughs> <laughs> Personally offended over here. <laughs> no, but I thought that that was like you know it's okay. Hot take here, guys. I've never seen The Hunchback of Notre Dame. <gasps> Oh, that no. was like my favorite. The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Hercules were my two favorite Hercules. Disney movies when I was little. Yes. But that was always my thought process is why they became like close was because he was like cast out on the street. And so was she because of what she did for work. So they like bonded mm. over that. Mm. It's no, a beautiful she was... love story from what I hear. <laughs> she was loved by Watch all it. men. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then where are I'm you? So sorry. <laughs> just gonna end just love. Gonna go. Okay, you guys, you guys enjoy this uh, episode. I'm gonna go watch Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Esmeralda and Cowboy sounded like a great couple, also. Right. They're the best duo yeah. ever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, unfortunately for whoever started this fire, and fortunately for us, not all evidence was destroyed. It was just going to take a little bit to find it. So Esmeralda, people in her life affectionately called her Emmy. Oh, oh my gosh. It got Emma. cuter. Yeah. This gets worse. I know, right? I'm upset now. <laughs> she was incredibly kind and friendly to all. She was described as genuine with a big heart. She was born on November 12th, 1980 and had two siblings her being the middle child, and she was close to both of them, as well as her parents. So and she's a Scorpio also. also. a Scorpio, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, well, this is the theme of our two know. episodes now, yeah. Yeah, people are going to write in and be like, what? What was her sign? Seriously. <laughs> I love it. She was always an incredibly caring friend and had a way of making you feel welcome. She graduated from San Antonio, Texas, A&M University, with a degree in psychology, and was working at a diabetes research center at the time of her death. She was passionate about helping people always. Aww. On March 1st, she had left her friend's house, saying that she was going to go home and clean up before her good friend Jose came over. It is unclear if there was a romantic relationship between the two of them as well, but they texted back and forth quite regularly, And on that evening, there had been 30 texts between the two. They had been close for about a year. That feels like a lot. Is that a lot? Mm, Well, initially, I was thinking that too, but I was thinking Beth and I probably text like 150 times a day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like, all right, that's like already 12 in my chat with Sierra from today. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If they're back and forth, it's like 15 and 15. It's not that bad. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. True. Now police at least had a start, knowing her movements before her death. In addition to her plan that evening, neighbors had reported an unfamiliar red Chevy pickup truck parked on the road, as well as hearing a woman scream around 1230 a.m. It always drives me crazy when people are like, oh, yeah, I heard somebody scream last night. Right. Yeah. Say this all <laughs> and then the time. Like, and then I peeked my head out and didn't hear anything. Well, because they're dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call the police. Goodness. Yeah. Oh my God. People don't have scream guys... in the middle of the night for no reason. Have mm-hmm. you seen that TikTok video that went viral of like the blood curdling screams and the van that like pulled up in the cul-de-sac and like four people were got this on their ring doorbell cameras because they were outside on their porch just watching. What? Yeah, no, it's the not most. Seamless. Okay, I'm gonna send it to you both after this. I gotta find it first, but it's the most aggravating video I've ever witnessed in my life. Like you can mm-hmm. hear the pain and fear in this person's screams, and people are like wrapped in their robes, just like, oh, what's happening out here? 
in this land. <laughs> like, can we have a sense of urgency? Like, somebody yeah. is clearly yes. in trouble. And I get that the bystander effect is a thing. And we always urge people, if you see something, say something. I'm sure you yep. guys say the same thing on your show. Mm-hmm. We do. It's ridiculous. Like, oh, okay, just after the fact. Or did they even hear anything and they just want to insert themselves in the case? Mm-hmm. Is another yeah. aspect, too, that I always want yeah. to know. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, like they just, I think I more times than not, they hear something and are just like, but, you know, I mean, I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And then it stopped. Yeah. Jose Flores was brought in for police questioning and initially denied having been at her apartment during two separate interviews. Unfortunately for him, DNA would be found in Esmeralda's apartment, tying him to the scene. Mm -hmm. Ding, ding, ding. There it is. A can Mm -hmm. of beer was left on the counter in the kitchen with his DNA. There were hairs and fibers from his clothing, plus a bloody shoe print. The shoe print was the only thing that they could not definitively tie to him, but the shoe size was the same. Mm. So he probably just got rid of the shoes. Yeah, I was going to say he threw the shoes out. Mm -hmm. Within six weeks of investigating, Jose was charged, but he didn't stay in jail long and was actually released just a month later. The district's... Uh, The district attorney's office said that they needed more concrete evidence to indict him. Okay. So um, they have literal DNA, but they're like, (laughs) "Uh, but that doesn't mean he did it. What's more concrete? Yeah. Well, maybe he was saying, well, yeah, my DNA is there because we've been friends for a year and I'm at our apartment all the time. That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, They had been friends for about a year. It's possible his hair could have been around the apartment and that he drank there with them within the week. Um, So it's technically circumstantial, but... I don't know I can any imagine. woman that would leave a beer can on her counter for that long. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm-hmm. Was there a bunch of other people's DNA there or just his? Oh, yeah. Good question. Yeah. Uh, good question. For the sake of, you know, the research, they only talked about his. So. <laughs> okay. I think that's... But that's a good question. I'm sure she had other people's there. But I think because they knew that they were meeting that night. Right. Mm-hmm. They were kind we're of like looking for him. Focusing his. in on you now. Yeah. Makes sense. He yeah. was a person of interest. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it would be five more years before an arrest and charge was done. This time with the help of the Texas Rangers. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> in 2016. Really like Texas. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't it like See, the Rangers and the state police are like different jurisdictions, right? Yeah. So they can, that's my understanding. And so they're yeah. going to crack down on this because no one else fucking is. Yeah. You don't want to <laughs> call in the Rangers. Oh, shit. Okay. They're going to come for business. you. Yeah. I hope we I like, like the Rangers in this one. Watch out, Joe slash well, Jose. I hope so also. Come on, Texas. <laughs> in 2016, Jose was arrested and charged not just with Esmeralda's murder, but also the murder of Heather Wilms. Nice. While there was no physical evidence to tie him to Heather's case, there was circumstantial evidence, and investigators felt that with the cards stacked against him for the murder of Esmeralda, that they could get a confession for Heather. Oh. Two families... Two families would now bond and grieve over the crimes committed by a person both of their daughters knew and called a good friend. There was an extra layer of betrayal for Heather's family, having known him for so long and spent time with him. Mm. And now I have a quote to read. Oh. The most disturbing part of this murder is that this brutal murder was not committed by a stranger. Joe Flores was thought of not just as a friend, but what Heather thought of as a big brother. Joe came to our house. He ate our food. He spent time with our children. He was no stranger. Five days after Joe Flores murdered Heather, he held up her casket with her body and walked oh down gosh. the aisle of our church as a pallbearer. He walked with the casket down the hill to the cemetery where he watched her casket get lowered into her grave. Heather watches over all of us every day and is our guardian angel. This is our opportunity to bring her justice. Although we will not carry his casket, he will live 
his life in prison and we will carry him in our hearts forever. That was Heather's wow. stepmom in his sentencing. We are what? literally all mortified by that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. What? Well, we know that when somebody... The betrayal. Like, mm-hmm. when there's a killer involved, often they make appearances at memorials yeah. or... yeah. But mm. to hold their actual casket. He was nope. like, that's Paul a new bearer. low. That's Mm-mm. a new low. Mm-mm. Yeah. Is it a pole bearer or a Paul, Paul bearer? Paul bearer, yeah. Paul oh, bearer, yeah. Man, that's fucked up, man. Uh, <sighs> but, like, what would you guys think as moms? Like, if, like, God forbid something happened to your children, like, what would you, like, your friend, like, their friends? Like, you would never yeah. think that. Well, no, they had no reason to. I mean, right. until, until. Ugh. The circumstantial evidence, I'm gonna put I my guess. future baby in a bubble. Mm-hmm. They're going in a bubble. Yeah, they have no friends. And these sweet so, girls, they were yeah. so young. Jose's trial was originally supposed to take place in March of 2020. Oh, so fuck. like the Wait. day the world shut down. <laughs> oh <laughs> or the month. yeah, COVID. <laughs> so the first one happened in 2000 and what did I say? Seven. 2005 2005 Mm -hmm. the second one happened in 2011 he was arrested Mm -hmm. in 2016 all that time they were trying to put a case together in march of 2020 is when his trial was supposed to take place and then covid happened so Mm -hmm. everything was pushed back even more families he was held (sighs) without bond until his trial finally happened in September of 2022. Mm. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jose was facing the death penalty. So in an attempt to save his own life, he took a plea deal and pleaded guilty to the murders of both Heather and Esmeralda. He was handed two consecutive life sentences on two first degree murder charges. And today is serving his sentences in Beeville in Texas, a maximum security prison. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's where he sits. Uh, be careful who your friends are. Although, of course, mm. this is 100% this man's fault, not at all their fault. 100%. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. But so was there any red flags about this guy ever? Well, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Right. What, I mean, no. it's just like he was our friend. He was part of our family. And then our daughter My got theory, murdered and he supported us. And then maybe is that he was maybe rejected by Heather initially. Hmm. Like, that's a theory that I was thinking. And like they were friends in high school. They were friends afterwards. She saw him as like a big brother figure. Hmm. Maybe he wanted more friends than them. Maybe. Maybe oh. he couldn't handle it because he has a fragile male ego. And same and, with Esmeralda then as well. And yeah, it would sound like, his like tolerance it was... for it were way lower. And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to set yeah. your building on fire. Yeah, it sounds like it with Esmeralda because they said, you know, we don't know if based uncool. on their text, it was friendly or romantic. And I mean, mm. maybe there was some flirting and he was like, oh, you're right. leading me on kind of thing. Um but yeah, or this guy is just a serial killer in the making, and right? who knows well, who he... else he did this to? Yeah, no kidding. Gosh. At least, yeah. Two. Did they because ever link MO him? Was befriending people and then murdering them down the road? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. No, but I would be interested it's... to look into that, Beth. As if like there's anybody else possibly that had an unsolved case in his life that he may know at some point. Yeah. I would assume I his feel like DNA Texas is would have in a system now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. That's true. Mm-hmm. And it was like four year difference, right? Am I yeah. right about that? Yeah. Five, five year difference. Seven. Five year difference, right. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't like him at all. No, no. Uh, no, he's not. But I don't he's... think they could have seen him coming. Like, I mean, no. I know, you know, you said be careful who your friends are, but like also people suck. People do suck. 100%. They do. And and as unfortunate as it is, if they maybe got the wrong idea and he's already a little unhinged. Right. Clearly. He's clearly unhinged. We say it on the show all the time. No means no. Right. Well, and it does go to your point where you were talking about that possibly he got rejected because there was sexual assault in both cases. Am I right about that? 
Yes. So, um, yeah, I mean, that definitely does Some, show a bit of a motive, I feel like, there. That yeah. He wanted what he wanted, and they said no. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Poor oh. Yeah, but he took a plea deal, so I assume he's not willing to to give any more details. He's like, right. no, fine, I did well, it. Just wanted, whatever. He just wanted to save his own life. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's like, I'll tell you what really happened if the death penalty is off the table. But you know, I always wonder about that whenever they do play, take plea deals. Why don't they say we? You can take a plea deal, like if the family, because the family has to agree to that, right? If right. Not, yeah. Or at least it's yeah. like it's a expected, courtesy, I think. A yeah. courtesy, yes, respectful mm-hmm. to let the family have a say. Why don't they say, "Tell us everything"? Like, here is our list of questions, and you answer them, and we're not going to give you the death penalty. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he give them a list of questions and make them answer them. Yeah. yeah. While looking at the family. That's what I think. That's a true story. But well, like, how do you know they're going to tell the truth anyway? Yeah. Well, you don't, but at least you've asked the questions and put them in the hot seat and made them sweat and have to, they have to say something. Otherwise it's yeah. like, well, he didn't answer. So he gets the death penalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, I get, make them remember- uncomfortable. Way, way back machine, Ted Bundy, I don't think he was ever given a plea deal because he had so many victims in three different states at that point. But, like, he Mm. refused to give details on, like, some. Right. Yeah. But then it makes you wonder, would they take it? Like, would that particular individual have taken it? No, in my opinion, because he's a huge narcissist and he would rather, you know, go. So maybe this guy was less of a narcissist and more of a coward and was just like, yeah, well I did this and I don't really want to die for it, but mm-hmm. I'm responsible. But then I, I also hope he didn't force plead him. guilty to Heather when he didn't do it because we still have no physical DNA. I think he did. Right. But like, right. what are the odds that you would be friends with two different women that died five years ago? Yeah. Coincidences right. yeah. don't happen in like that. Very similar manners, right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Like we say, there's no coincidences in true crime. Yeah. I do. We so, say that too. No coincidences. I in love murder. it. Yeah. You got to You got to put that on shirts, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it is somewhere on Amazon. Well, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a great, great, a scary story, yeah. but a great one. Yeah. And the I opposite know. of what our Crimes and Quiet gals did on ours. So. Yeah. yeah. Right. It was. Check it out again. It's very interesting to see the difference in like what we chose. We had the same theme, best friend murders, but like yeah. it's really interesting to see the different paths that they that those took. So I That's like why that. We have so much fun with them because it's like you can literally do anything within that realm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or yeah. purposefully misunderstand the assignment and do whatever the fuck you want, I guess. That's but- <laughs> right. But you could probably yeah. still tie it in some way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But a theme is a theme. Exactly. Yeah. My 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 famous question. Well, I don't think it's famous because I'm not famous. But like, I always well, ask basically, Beth, like, I mean, how did you find that? Where did you get that? <laughs> like, I don't like, know. She does ask that a lot. <laughs> when you so when I googled for your episode, this, yeah, I was like, I was determined. I I googled like best friend crimes, and then it was kind of like. Or best friend murders or something. I can't remember. Now I can't remember. But it was like I was constantly seeing best friends who murdered together. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what your like parameters were. I don't know. I'm always so interested in this. (laughs) I did the same thing at first. Um, Mm -hmm. I I typed in best friend crimes or um, best friend criminal or something like that. And Mm -hmm. at first I also got just a bunch who killed together best friends partners in crime you know over and over again and because that was the first thing i found on google i was like i don't want to accidentally do the same case i'm gonna type in best friend murderer so (laughs) i found a best friend who was the killer right two different instances which is even grosser because that was my like one of my concerns was like we're gonna yeah there's only like so (laughs) many of these we're gonna have the same case okay all right i'll avoid anything with that name (laughs) yeah yeah anyway 
fascinating yeah. to me like people's process yeah because there they... are some big ones that a lot of yeah. shows have covered like Skylar mm-hmm. Niece well that yeah. Beth just or did that Slender one Man. and that was yeah. one that's that a... came up on all of mine and the yeah, yeah the Wisconsin one the w- Waukesha one yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Skylar's on our Patreon she's it, that's a West Virginia case so that mm-hmm. had been on my personal list for a while because that one makes that's where I'm from so Ill. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Bam. Yeah, it is very upsetting. So, but um, thank you guys for the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's super upsetting. Yes. Best friend I, crimes. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now yeah. we're all going to cheers and <laughs> depart amicably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right now. Yes. Everything no is okay bad right here. Blood. She's talking Nobody to me. Knows where I live. Yeah. <laughs> She's talking to me. I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying <laughs> to you. Well, well, yeah. Did anybody piss anybody off recently? No. 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 If I don't hear from either of you next week, I'm going to ask questions. <laughs> you don't got to worry about us. We go down in flames together. I love it. <laughs> Well, Sierra, thank you so much for um, researching that and bringing that one to our attention because I like was never even on my radar and I've never seen. Right. And a wild little twist at the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She is queen of the twist cases. (laughs) Twisted and uncorked. I was just going to say, like, I mean, hence your name. (laughs) (laughs) And we so appreciate you guys joining us today. Like it was like you said, long time coming and excited that we actually got to do this. And yes. I, I mean, we've had fun. I, I yeah. Had fun. Yeah. For I sure. had fun. I know. No. It's like so late for Beth and Sierra. And the, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's okay. I just all I'm spare enjoying... and love and crime. Yeah. I'm enjoying <laughs> drinking my wine and not having to put any of my children to bed. So. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you again for having us on. Yes, yeah, anytime. Yeah. You guys yes. go hit them up, Twisted and Uncorked. Yeah, on go things. find them. Yeah, I mean, you're on all the things too, right? Just like yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you're listening to us, you can listen to them. And we appreciate all of our listeners and love you all. And just always remember the world is scary. People suck, just like Jose <laughs> in your closets.